Hi, everybody. This is Mr. Polly. And welcome to Big Idea 7 of 9. Uh, equilibrium. So let's go ahead and get started. All right. So equilibrium. Most reactions do not go to completion. Once products are made, they start turning back into reactants. I'm going to throw the word back into that. Back into reactants. So what this means is we say reactants are on the left and products are on the right. But I really can have products turn into reactants, okay? We call the stuff on the right is always going to be called a product, even though it's acting as a reactant. And on the left is always going to be a reactant. And that's not that tricky, but just in case that makes you go crazy. Examples are phase changes. So you can melt something and then you can freeze it back. Um, absorbing a gas, so stale bread. So if the bread is stale, you can unstale it by putting it in a humid, 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 humidifier. And same thing for moist cookies. Uh, precipitation. So what happens with precipitation reaction is once the chunks form, there's continual dissolving and precipitating and dissolving and precipitating and dissolving and precipitating. So the mass is constant, but that keeps going back and forth. Weak acids and bases are redox reactions. I'm sorry, weak acids and bases are uh, equilibrium reactions, and so are redox reactions. And I forgot this one right here. Um, so non-examples are combustion. The reverse doesn't work well for gases. And gas-producing reactions in open systems. And then I forgot my other one. One, two, three. Um, strong acids. So strong acids, 100% to ions. Okay. So that's a very important one. And equilibrium is dynamic. What that means is it doesn't stop. So you don't reach the spot and go, ah, I'm here. The forward and reverse occur at the same rate. So I think of it like a bell in our class period. So when the bell rings, ding! Oh, oh, that was a weird ding. Ding! What happens is 24 people go in, 24 people go out. And then what happens again next? Ding! 24 people come in, 24 people go out. Ding! 24 people go in, 24 people go out. Ding! Okay, you get the idea. Um, the forward and re reverse reaction occur at the same rate. So notice, 24 people every 6 minutes, 24 people every 6 minutes, 24 people every 6 minutes, 24 people every 6 minutes. Okay? So the change per time is rate. Okay? The rates are equal at equilibrium. So the question of what's equal at equilibrium, that is the rate, not the amount. So here's a graph, a couple of graphs that talk about how you can be confused by this. So notice this guy right here is the rate. Right. So notice the forward rate and reverse rate are equal. The rates are equal at equilibrium. This is the concentration, which is the amount, basically. And notice the amounts are not equal, but the amounts are constant. OK. OK. So let's take a look at some weird things we can do. So right here, we're at equilibrium. Yay, nothing's changing. OK, so equilibrium, 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 equilibrium. OK. And then right here, bah, 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 we have a disturbance. Disturb. And then we have to change. Da, 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 da. And then we reach equilibrium. Equilibrium. Bah, 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 bah. Why is it equilibrium? Because notice the concentrations are constant at equilibrium. Okay. And then what happens? Oh, no, we have a change. Da, da, da. And then what happens once we have that change? Oh, we go back to equilibrium. Da, da, da. Right? And then what happens? Oh, no, we have a change. So when you change it, equilibrium is always reestablished. It's just going to be um, at a different spot. Make sense? I hope so. So equilibrium is where the amounts are constant, right? But they're not equal, not equal, not equal. Um, hey, that was it for part one. Uh, part two. Equilibrium can be disturbed, then reestablished, and that's what this is showing. Disturbance! Red line. And then reestablished where I highlight it. All right. The direction of a reversible reaction. If a reaction can go to equilibrium, then it either is at equilibrium or it's going there. Okay? So people say this about, I don't know, the important places in the world. Say you're from Texas. You say, I'm either in Texas or I'm heading to Texas. So, you know, if you take me out of Texas, I'm just on my way back to Texas. Or whatever. I think the Latin ears know that all roads lead to Rome. So you're either in Rome or there's a, you're on a road going to Rome. Yeah, you get the idea. If I have too many reactants, 
the reaction, the reaction will shift to make products because the rate of the forward is faster than the rate of the reverse. No reaction stops. So I just want to point out that the explanation of why is rates. Okay. So don't say the reverse reaction goes. Mm, if I have too many reactants, or don't say the forward reaction goes. There's still, make sure you make sure there's, you clearly indicate that both reactions are happening, but one of them is faster. If I have too many products, then the reaction will shift to, to reduce the products and make more reactants because the rate of the reverse is faster than the rate of the forward. If you just say the reverse reaction goes because I have too many pr products, the reverse goes, you need to make sure that the forward is still going, but just the reverse is faster. Too much means concentration, not mass. So these things are concentration because they deal with rates. Remember, amounts don't affect rates, just concentration. All right, so at time 10, I added chlorine. So here's my reaction. Dun, 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 dun. At time 10, I added chlorine. So notice my chlorine goes up. Oop. Actually, what happens here? It looks like it. And I wrote the wrong thing. At time 10, what I think happened is I removed my bad, removed CO. So I precipitated out CO. Boom. Okay. And then what happens is CO starts coming back. All right. And chlorine starts going up because what happens is, oh, no, I'm out of CO. I'm going to shift, right, to give that back. And when I do that, I'm going to make more CO. Look, it's coming up. I'm going to make more CO2. Look, it's coming up. But I'm going to lose some of my CO, CO2. Oh, okay. At time 14, I have a side reaction removing Cl2 and Cl. Oh, I removed them both. So if I removed them both, uh oh, oh, it looks like I removed all three. That's weird. Yeah, it looks like I removed all three. See this drop says, I removed all three. Oh no, I should look at my question better. Removed Cl2 and Co, and then they just re, I'm gonna get rid of that. We'll pretend we didn't see that one. Okay, I remember looking at that, I think it was ugly. All right, part three, reaction quotient Q, and equilibrium constant K. So, what I'm gonna do first is fix my messing space. So the equilibrium constant is K. A ratio exists at equilibrium, okay? There's a ratio of concentration. So remember, if I have concentrations, that means molarity. But I have pressure. P equals pressure. Oh, no. Part of my P didn't show up. Okay? So a ratio exists of products over reactants. Okay? So the way these reactions are written is little a, a plus little b, b yields little c, c, plus little d, d. So notice it's just products over reactants. Products over reactants. So it's products over reactants raised to coefficients. And that equals k. And that also equals q, which is weird, but there are different types. Okay, so p is pressure. So if it's pressure, you got to make sure you do p's. Notice not brackets, because it's not concentration. Okay. A ratio exists whether or not the reaction is at equilibrium. This ratio is called Q for quotient, which is the answer of a division problem. The formula is identical to K, but it may or may not be at equilibrium. It is at some time, which we say time T. Right? So Q equals K, which is products over reactants. Q, P equals KP, products over reactants. All right. So using KC, equilibrium for concentration, or Kp, equilibrium for pressure. Kc is concentrations, molarity. It's good for solutions, good for gases, because gases can't have molarities, right? Because it's just moles over liters. That's why that still makes sense. We do omit solids and liquids as their concentration is constant. Kp is pressure in atmospheres. It's good for gases, but you leave out solids, liquids, and solutions because their pressure is constant. All right. Ooh, I didn't think I was going to go this far. Calculating K, Q. Okay. K and Q are unitless. Ooh. And all we're going to do is make our expressions. Okay. What is the value of the reaction quotient for the following system? So I'm going to write reaction quotient as Q. I'm going to do products. C, O. Oh, man. Made a cobalt instead of 
carbon dioxide, CO2 cubed times H2O. Now, H2O is often a liquid, so I check to make sure it's a gas. Well, actually, what is the value of the reaction quotient? We'll say it's Kc, all right? And we'll do Qc here. Um, so we'll make that 4 over, well, actually, this is an atmosphere, so we're going to give it, um, we're going to give it um, a P. Um, so that means I need to change my Q expression. Da, da, da. P, CO2 cubed. P, H2O, fourth. P, C3, H8. P, O2, to the fifth. And I'm just going to plug that in. So the partial pressures are, uh, so CO2 is 0.789 cubed times H2O is 0.123, fourth over uh, propane is 1.23 to the 1, and I have to put to the 1, but I'm doing it just so I make sure I remember to do it, 4.56 to the 5th. Then because my calculator is dodging me right now, you put that in your calculator and that's what you get. All right. Uh, reaction, so what's the question say? What is the value of the reaction quotient? So when you do that, you do 0.789 squared times 0.123 raised to the fourth divided by 1.23 divided by 4.56. That'll be the answer to the pilot quiz question. All right, 2A plus B is in, is in equilibrium with 2C plus D. They're all aqueous. Has an equilibrium constant, that's K of this. By the way, temperature is the only thing that changes K. Temperature is the only thing that changes K. Given the following concentrations, find the equilibrium concentration of C. So K is C squared products D over reactants A squared B. So they gave me K. K is 0 0.0234. And then C is, oh, well, look at it change. C is missing, so I'm going to have C squared, and then D is 2.91 over A squared, 0.261, times B, which is 4.13, to the first. So then what I would do is 0 0.0234 times 0 0.261 squared times 4.13. I'm just solving for C squared. Ah! All over 2.91 equals C. And I'll do the big root daddy of that. Okay. I'll leave it in that wonderful root form because I know how much that's on load. Um, if this reaction performed at a lower temperature where the KEQ is lower, what will happen to the amount of all of the reactants and products? Now, if KEQ is lower, remember K is products over reactants. So if KEQ was lower, that means I would have more reactants, fewer products. Okay. There you go. Decreasing by X. So it would be more, so I add X to the reactants and subtract P from the products. That's it. We're done. We're out of here. Toodles.